So it's good to be here. They let me speak sometimes. <laughs> so, and it's, it's a joy. It's, it's such a privilege to bring the word of God. And um, there's, yeah, as Peter said, there's two Thursdays night before we take a, a break over the summertime. So I thought I'd get in just before the summertime. We haven't we been, been blessed over these weeks. Just the word of God. And we had Norman sharing a testimony. We had Brother David and with so, so many others. And Peter shared a, a, a powerful word in anointing. And there's going to be a resource on that, isn't there, Peter, as well? Um, but as I prayed about tonight, what came to me was uh, really the battle of our minds. That it's in our mind, really, where the battle is. Amen? Sometimes we think it's outside, it's in our families, and even in, in our bodies, but that, it's in our mind. And I, I want to share a little bit of what the Lord has been speaking to me. And really, as I share this, this is for me tonight, and you can get the, the, the overflow of that. Amen? Um, and again, just thank you for coming out, whether it's, if you, it's your first time, and I think, Richard, it might be your first time here in St. Patrick's, and it's good to see Lucinda here as well. And if you've come from a wee bit further afield, um, you're so, we're so blessed that you ha have you with us tonight. There's something about... When we gather in the Lord's name, there's a, a certain atmosphere, isn't there? Even as we praise here tonight, there's an atmosphere that's around us, but also within us. And as we receive God's word tonight, that that atmosphere really penetrates in a different way tonight. Amen. So I want to read from um, two, two passages, really. Um, and the first, you'll know very well from Romans 12. And this is Paul writing to the church that met in Rome. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And then verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Say the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Amen. And then the other scriptures from 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, say strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, bringing every thought into captivity into the obedience of Christ. Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for your word. And Holy Spirit, let this be a, a deep revelation in us tonight. If you were to call, uh, and this is for Peter's sake as well, I suppose that the, the theme tonight would be the renewing of our minds. Amen. And that's where uh, it's really struck me that we can come to church services, we can come to many things, but in the midst of being blessed, sometimes there's stuff going on in our minds that's causing fear, anxiety, frustration, and separation? Or is that just me? Do you identify with that, amen? And I really felt uh, and sensed for tonight, just to press into this a little bit, for Fergus McMorrow, first of all, and hopefully for yourselves. And also something here, I want to bring something practical that we can bring into the summer months that would bring transformation and hope. Amen. Reading the Psalms, um, there's a word that keeps coming out, and this is really going to bring us into a practical outworking of this. It's Psalm 63, 6 says, When I think of you, Lord, as I lie on my bed, I meditate on you during the night watches. And I want to link renewing the mind with meditating on the Word of God. 
renewing our minds through meditating on the Word of God. Can we journey in that for a few moments? And then we want to do something about it and respond to it. And we think if the word meditation has got a bad rap, hasn't it? It's got a bad rap, and yet it's a biblical word. It's like a lot of things that are of the Lord, the enemy tries to steal it and corrupt it. But actually, it began, meditate began in the Word of God. And particularly, if you look through Psalms, it's filled with meditation, and lots of other scriptures are filled with that word meditate. The word in Hebrew is, I'm going to butcher this, I'll try my best, hag'ah. H A G A H. I have to say how H there. I have to watch how you say that. Haga. Say Haga. And really, what does that mean? It, it's the same idea as eating. And it means you, as we meditate, as we Haga on the Word, we encircle the Word of God, we surround it, we ingest it. And once it ingested, it's like eating food. It becomes part of our bodies. You are what you eat. Amen. And as I was praying about this, at a very uh, non-religious image came into my head, actually, which often God speaks to me like that. And do you remember the old Westerns? Some of you are too young to remember them, but the old Westerns, the guys used to be chewing, and they did spit. And I think it was tobacco, wasn't it, that they were chewing this? It didn't look very nice. That they would chew this tobacco, and then this, and it'd go by 20 feet. And when I was five or six, I got a cowboy outfit for, for Christmas with red corduroy trousers and, and the wee, wee jacket. Probably still fits me, to be honest. And the big badge, and a holster with two silver guns. And I was watching, and I thought, I think I could do that. So I got the, the water and tried to do the, and of course it went all over me. But that image came back to me because as we ingest the Word of God, as we allow just to ruminate in our mouths, what comes out then? And stuff, when stuff happens, is that same word. When we get news of something, when somebody, like poor Peter here was somebody, as he was going home a few weeks ago, a car pretty much banged into him on the motorway and rode off the car, and we're praying for a new car. But again, um, Peter began to pray for the guy, I'm sure. I think he did. You told me that. So it's in those situations, whatever we've been chewing comes out. Does that make sense? And that, just that encouragement to what, what are we ingesting? What are we ingesting? One of the fun, fundamental words for the Israelites, of course, is Deuteronomy 6, Four, six, the Shema, and it's their, their fundamental word, which says this, Hear, O Israel, and hear divine healing ministries, hear community that meets at St. Patrick's. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart heart, say heart, and your heart. And this really challenged me today as we, and over this week as I looked at this word, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And we know, of course, the Orthodox Jews, we often see them wear the phylacteries. Um, I, when I was much, much younger, I stayed in this, this rented accommodation. And I noticed there was a wee bump on the, on the doorpost. I thought, gosh, and I took it off. And inside was a little cylinder. And when I opened it, there was a, a, the scroll of the Shema. I realized, that obviously, uh, Jews had lived in that house at some point. I felt quite bad after that because I didn't realize what it was. But there's something that that scripture for me to, over these days just erupted because do I teach God's word diligently to our children? Do I talk of God's word when I sit up? When I'm walking by the, the way, do I talk of God's word? When I lie down, am I talking God's word? Often we talk of other things, don't we? But here, this, the Lord's resetting us and bringing us back 
to his way. And my, the challenge to Fergus McMorrow tonight, which and the invitation to you, is that from this moment, we allow the Lord to reset us, that we begin to speak his word. Speak his word. Not just think it, but speak it. Are you hearing that? To speak his word. And Psalm 1, we know very well, I love Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who not, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night, day and night, day and night. And what happens when, when he does that? He shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season. Amen. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate. Are you getting it? You shall meditate in it day and night. This translation says you shall meditate in it. I thought that was really good. Not just on it, but in it that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. And then what happens when Joshua does that and the people of God do that? For then you will make your way prosperous and you shall have success, good success. There's something about our subconscious. There's something about, um, do you know when you're learning to drive? I, I'm, there's two of our children learning to drive at the minute. And, you know, they're going through all the... I'm quite proud of myself as an instructor, I have to say. But um, I've been teaching, now that's only around the car park, Brother David, so I can't really boast. <laughs> but do you, you probably forget when we learn to drive, you know, um, you, you know, talk about multitasking, you know, getting all your, your used to be left in the two and all this and the gears and the mirror and all of this. And then I remember uh, after I passed my driving test, uh, about a year later, I remember driving from, um, Greencastle back down to Strangford and I reached St. Phil and I suddenly realized, gosh, how did I get there? It was so in my subconscious that I was driving without even thinking about it. I was daydreaming of the night that probably that we've had. There's something about our subconscious and there's something about our subconscious late at night. So there's something about proclaiming God's word late at night. Are you anxious at night? Are you struggling with dreams, for instance? Are you struggling with anxious thoughts at night or distracting thoughts? I sense the Lord saying to me, first of all, Fergus, begin not only to, to read quietly my word, but to speak it out. To speak it out. Some people I know listen to God's word as they go to sleep as well, just through their earphones. But there's something about speaking out God's word. Again, back to 2 Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Sometimes we think when there's stuff going on in our minds that we, we need to bind, we need to plead, plead the blood of Jesus and do all these things. But do you notice what it says here? For the weapons of our warfare, not the weapon. Sometimes there's, we think there's one solution for everything. There's a one remedy for anything. What the Lord seems to be revealing is to have that wisdom to know what's the weapon for a particular spot. And for our minds, for the renewing of our minds, it's not about binding. It's about proclaiming his word. Amen. There's something about the renewing of our mind comes through, not so much through prayer. Prayer is important, but it's about proclaiming his word, hearing his word. Because the, the key part there is, it talks about imaginations. The stronghold in our mind is the imaginations. And if we find, if we're 
deflecting to anxiety, to criticism, to gospel, gossip, which is the, the enemy's DJ track is gossip, isn't it? Criticism is the music of the enemy. If our imaginations are going in other directions, the encouragement, the invitation of the Lord is to begin to proclaim his word. And we're going to do that in a moment. Most of the things we battle are in our mind. Is anybody worried about tomorrow? And it's a very, we have to be honest here. There's times I, oh gosh, we're th- we're, okay, this team retreat, have, have we got our, f- by the way, the food sorted? Don't bring any food, by the way. <laughs> I th- okay, there's things, to, and there's, that's natural to be, but actually, if we're constantly being worried about tomorrow, there's a stronghold there. And we can come for prayer, which is great, but actually, the tearing down of that stronghold is through the proclamation of God's word. Do we get a, 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 yes, we get our brains washed through his word. You know, sometimes that's an accusation, oh, you're brainwashed. No, I'm blood washed. <laughs> I'm word washed. I'm Holy Spirit washed. That's what I want, amen. St. Paul, again, that, as after he had his encounter, what did he say? My present suffering is nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed. He could have been worried about tomorrow, and yet he says, my present suffering is nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed. So we don't fix our mind just simply by praying. Ephesians 6, 13, what's the first piece of armor? The helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet. Isn't that interesting? That's the first piece of armor to go on. That says something, doesn't it? So, for, for, again, for Fergus McMorrow, the Lord is saying, Fergus, check your mental state. Check your thoughts. Check what's going on up here. Where your thoughts go, that's where your body will go. Where our thoughts go is where our body goes. And that's, often that's why worry begins to show itself in sickness. That's why unforgiveness begins to show itself in sickness. Isn't that right? We know that. Not to say that every sickness is due to that, but it's something just to, to recognize. We can see it in ourselves and in others. When God wants to lift you or I up, He will allow us to be tempted, even in our thoughts, but not beyond what we can bear. Amen. He will provide a way out and a way through. So I want to come to the, how do we fix this? How do we fix these thoughts that are going, is any of this resonating? These thoughts that go through our mind. Because what the Lord calls us to is to have a calm spirit, which is his Holy Spirit. Yes, we can at at times have a righteous anger, but have you been around someone who carries just that calm spirit? It's beautiful, isn't it? There's something, you know, this person is established in God's word. God's word is established in them. So here's, here's the challenge for you and for me. And I want, I want us to do a, a week's trial. Can we do this? It's free. Do you ever see those, the first week is free? Okay, this is free. And in fact, the next week's free as well, but don't tell anybody. So here's, here's a wee challenge for you and to me and to begin to do this. And come back next Thursday and say, I can promise you something will have happened. In fact, we'll put money on it. Amen. For week one, just start with one scripture. Say Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can we say that together? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Say it again. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What about from tonight? This is Thursday night, the 13th of June, 2024. As we go to sleep, before that even to begin to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not just to quietly, but to speak it out. I've been doing this all day, and it's, I, could, I could feel a difference deep in within me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then begin to make it personal. If you've got a, has anybody got an appointment tomorrow? There's a few people might have an appointment tomorrow. In this appointment, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In this appointment, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you have a difficult conversation to have with someone? In this conversation, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And just begin to pray it out loud, to proclaim it out loud. Go to sleep with that going on in you. Amen. And then when you wake up, and what's your dreams, actually? What do you do when you wake up? Don't lift your iPhone. Don't lift the, the, the radio, turn the radio on. Let that be our first word. On this Friday morning, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And this day, uh, Lord, and now all that I have to do today, as we prepare for our team retreat, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'll keep doing that through tomorrow until tomorrow night. I'll make it personal. There could be a situation that you're facing. In this situation, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We get to, to Saturday, to day two, and pick your biggest issue. And even right now, in this moment, what are your three best, biggest challenges, biggest issues, the things that are deep within you right now? Can you think of three? Or even think of one. It could be for yourself. It could be a family member. They're easy to come right away. I know mine's already there. Amen. And say that if that issue is fear, take one scripture that speaks into that. For example, do not be afraid, I am with you. I do not have a spirit of fear. I have a sound mind, I have self-control. I'm beginning to proclaim that aloud through the day, amen. But you'll know what your, your biggest issue is and what's, what's the scripture that will speak into that. If it's to do with healing, find a healing scripture. If it's to do with finance, if it's to do with reconciliation with a family member, and just speak that out aloud through the day and make it personal. Again, if it's fear, I will never be afraid because God is with me. He's never left me, never left me. His angels surround me. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And do that through the day, even as you're driving, as you're going through Tesco's. I can do all things through Christ. You'll probably find as the wee girl's giving you the change, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> Amen. And be expectant for miracles. Be expectant for revelation. Be expectant for breakthrough, because it's God's word, and it creates what it was sent to do. And you, we find just, you'll find just something happens in our minds that, that begins to be renewed. The challenge is to keep doing it, to make it a discipline. Has anybody here come without brushing their teeth today? Not going to own up to that. There's things that we do without even thinking about it. How about that this would be something that is even more important than brushing our teeth, even more important than washing our hands. 
this becomes part of us. Like those cowboys, when we, if something happens and we spit out, what comes out is the Word of God. Amen. It changes the atmosphere in our minds. It changes the atmosphere around us. We will have challenges as the Lord elevates us and elevates us. But as his word is in us, as our minds are renewed, we will be that army that we sang about. And that's why I sense this word is for now. It's for me, first of all, but because the Lord is preparing us for such a time as this. Um, I'm thinking, I'm looking down at Alan. Alan's got a, an amazing testimony that he's going to be sharing with us very shortly. Amen. And um, just, I, I'd wonder, I'll give you a wee, wee trailer, Alan, without breaking what you're going to share. But in, as Alan was in hospital in a, a very difficult situation, a very serious situation, Alan was getting squeezed in every way. In fact, his lungs were, weren't working, so he's physically getting squeezed. But what, what was coming out was God's word. As he went, as, you, as we know Alan, just quietly going around, uh, even though he's on a table, uh, on a bed in the corridor, going around ministering very quietly to people and chatting to them. What was coming out was God's word. What was coming out was hope. What was coming out was the presence of God. So thank you, Alan, for that testimony. But I, I know that's because you meditate on God's Word. You chew it. So in that pressing time, you chose not to be afraid. You chose to believe in God's Word. We have a decision from tonight. We can choose to be impacted by what's going on around us and inside us, or we can choose to be impacted by God's Word. That's our choice tonight. I know what one I want to choose because I'm fed up getting swung by emotions and stuff. Come tonight, what about if we did this as one community? Let that be our prayer tonight. Amen. Um, some of you know that our own family going through a, a, a beautiful time where we're much to be thankful for. Three four of our kids are going to summer madness. And one of our kids is going through a really challenging time, really challenging time. Um, impacted his mental health and we're seeing me glimmers of hope actually but still he's in that journey and yet what I find in Amory and myself as we could have gone into fear real fear as you see your own child and there's something beautiful that's been happening in us as we've chosen to chew in God's word and speak it I've been amazed by my wife she's encouraged me and you know she'll drop a text and speak out a word and I thank God for his word, even in our brokenness and even in our sinfulness, that there's enough of his word in us that has given us hope and teaching us how to pray at a different level. I know that this season is that we would elevate it in our trust in the Lord, in our authority as, as a family, and that there's a beautiful testimony that's just stirring nicely in the midst of this. That doesn't negate the pain of a child at what he's going through, but what it does, it elevates God's word. It is God's word that is changing everything. And we're beginning to see that bear fruit. Amen. So I want to go back to the beginning. I beseech you, I beseech us, therefore, brethren, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, that we will not be conformed to this world, but we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God, that we will know the will of God. Who wants to know the will of God? Here's the, here's the key through his word and to speak his word, to meditate on his word, to speak it out. Many of you are already doing this. I know that. I can see it in you. So this is mostly for me tonight. But it's a, it's a reminder and encouragement. Let's allow that word to really speak in us, that we would speak it out and speak it to each other. Speak it as we go even out of here tonight. Speak it in the highways and byways. 
Speak it as we go to Tesco. Speak it as we drive in the car. Let's see what will happen. Let's see what will happen. Amen. Amen, Henrietta. Amen. So, Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for this invitation to meditate on your word, to chew it, to, to allow the word of God to renew our minds, transform our minds. For each person here, everyone who might watch this recording, this day I choose, Lord, to meditate on your word, to speak it out, to speak it out, to proclaim it, even to sing it. And come, Holy Spirit, Come, Holy Spirit, bring that revelation of the love of the Father. That we would know the will, the perfect will of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.